Big Daddy here, and today we're going to take a look at Manjaro 17, KDE edition. So let's get started. So in the last video of the preview distro that I did, I did New Runner, which was based on Manjaro. So I figured I would do a preview on Manjaro itself and maybe see what the differences are. So I will say that I am unable to get this installed right at the moment. So it's running off of the live USB installer. And uh, well, let me just show you what happens when I actually go to hit the installer. So I click it, and it, depending on which time I do it, I may, like this time, get nothing. Or I may actually get the installer to come up, but there's no way to click next. There's no nothing. It just, it's basically frozen in time until probably no longer than 30 seconds later, it just disappears. So after about 10 or 12 times, I decided that uh, I'm just going to do the video on the live installer. So there you have it. All right, so let's see what uh, Manjaro has to offer. It has, let's see what's under the hood. Get it? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 5.9.3, which is the latest Plasma version. Uh, Frameworks, which is 5.31. Qt 5.8. The kernel is 4.9.13, and it's still running an i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, but like I said, it's not on an SSD drive because I'm not able to get it installed. But with that said, it's running pretty, pretty darn fast for running on a USB stick. So I've not had any hesitation, not any problems so far. Um, I have to say that I have not had one crash. Uh, not one KWIN crash, not uh, not plasma, not nothing, not system settings. It has been pretty stable since I've been running it. And Manjaro has always been to me where I install it and it runs good for a couple of days. And then whether it be an update or whatnot, there are times where it doesn't always run smooth then. But for this particular edition it seems to be running smooth now i mean only time would tell how that'll work out but um right now hey no complaints whatsoever so you get a traditional layout you get the clock system tray uh, you get a trash icon and a show desktop and over here you get your system task manager but it's icons only i mean now you can change that but this is the default and you get a dolphin file manager shortcut along with the desktop changer so for the menu itself you have the three normal alternatives for um, plasma edition which is the dashboard launcher and the menu itself right now we're on the menu and we're just going to stay there the only thing that I've done to the menu is I have shown shown the uh, applications by name and I've turned off the hover effect because that drives me nuts especially in a video it drives me nuts all right, so software, um, you have one or two things installed under development and education, but under games, you have Steam pre-installed. Um, under graphics, you have Digicam for photos, Gwenview, which is another viewer, uh, Inkscape for an editor, Krita, uh, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular, which is the PDF viewer, uh, Show Photo, another viewer editor, and Scanlight. So quite a bit of uh, applications here installed. Under Internet, you have Firefox, uh, Thunderbird, Conversation, uh, KGET, which is a download helper, and QBitTorrent. Under Multimedia, you have Cantata, which is a pretty darn good music player, K3B, uh, Kden Live, which is installed by default. Now, I installed OBS and Simple Screen Recorder trying to see which one I was going to use for the video itself, but I opted to go with OBS. Um, you have VLC, but actually Zine is the default media player when you go to click on a file. So that's interesting. Under Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite. 
under settings, you have system settings, which is normal to KDE, but you also have, um, you know, the NVIDIA settings, but you got the Manjaro settings manager. Now this is a separate window to this, but you can actually get to these through the system settings and you'll notice that they move the settings around to where the Manjaro settings are at the top. So you have pretty much the same items in here as you do over here. Uh, it's just in the total system settings. So I guess it depends on which one you prefer to use. So other than that, the uh, settings are pretty much generic plasma except for uh, the system D. And the actual workspace themes, they have a brand new theme that they're using called Breath. And it used to be, I believe their default theme used to be Maya. And they uh, have have added breath and it actually although is not my taste or color because I'm not a green person uh, but it is St. Patty's Day soon so you know hey <laughs> um, but it integrates well with the system itself so um, they have done a pretty good job of if you're into green putting it throughout the system and uh, making it look cohesive all the way through. So it definitely goes well with the system that they're trying to, you know, they always have been green and that's just the way Manjaro is, but it runs through very well. So that's definitely a good thing. Of course, that can be changed easily. So themes are themes. Um, there's also an icon breath set with it, which I guess is based off of the breeze theme. Other than that, like I said, the uh, settings are pretty much the same as uh, another Plasma Edition. They do offer customizations like, um, um, you know, the theme itself and root actions, which is a big thing for me. I know it may not be for you, but it is for me. Um, and activities, they also add the copy to and move to by default in there, which uh, is not in there by default. And it's, it's a well-rounded distribution. It uses Octopi for its software and updates. And although I am not a big fan of Octopi, uh, I, would, I myself prefer to use uh, PayMac, but Octopi runs very well. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a very capable software manager. Um, you can search in your regular repositories or you can click the little green man to search in the AUR. So... And it all, like I said, it also handles the updates as well, all in one. So it's definitely a capable software manager. It's just not mine of choice. So the question is, would I run Manjaro? Well, I would definitely give it a try uh, if I could get it installed. <laughs> but uh, overall, it seems to be, and like I said, I got to go back to the fact that I'm running off of a live USB installer and it's still running pretty quick. Um, so I can imagine what it would do on an SSD. Um, could I run it? Yeah, I could definitely run it. Um, Octopi is not a uh, deal breaker as far as not being able to run the system. Um, so I could definitely run this. Could you run it? Could you run Manjaro as a daily driver? Do you run it? If you do, put it in the comments below. Tell me what experiences you've had with Manjaro. Are they good or are they bad? Right now, the experience is good. So until next time, Big Daddy out.